Question number 27 says integrate from 0 to pi by 2 cos square x dx upon cos square x plus 4 sin square x. How will we handle this one? So, one of the ideas is why not apply the property 3 or property 4 once you see cos square and sin square. But then if you realize that there is a 4 over here which will create a lot of problems. Had there been no 4, these two coefficients, had these been same, then applying that p3 that is f of a plus b minus x property, you will get the same denominator and the numerators can be added simplified. But here, here it will be an issue. So when you encounter this kind of a thing, what will you do? What will you do in such cases? So imagine, imagine this. In the previous question, we divided by cos, right? Okay, we can divide by cos over here also. So i is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2. Dividing by cos, this becomes 1 upon 1 plus 4 tan square x dx. Okay, what else? Now, can I make a simple substitution? What kind of substitution are you talking about? I wanted to substitute this tan x as t. What is the derivative of tan x? Is it there in the numerator? No, there is no derivative. But tan, derivative of tan x is sec square x, right? Okay, and sec square x can be written in terms of tan square x, which is simple. Yes, because I already have tan x equals t. Yes, so we will put tan x equals t. What does that give me? Sec square x dx is equal to dt. Okay, therefore I, now observe this carefully. Because this is dangerous territory. Integral tan 0 is 0. Okay. Lower limit. Upper limit will be tan pi by 2 which is nothing but infinity. Yes. It is tending to infinity. Yes. Yes. This is important. Oh. And charity people have gone beyond this. Yes. They have gone beyond that. And they are giving you infinity over here. Let it be. What next? This becomes 1 upon 1 plus 4 t square. Right. So, since this is a miscellaneous series, we are seeing these kind of things. Okay, but let it be. Let it be. What next? dx is dt upon sec square x, which is 1 plus tan square x, 1 plus t square. This is what you get in the denominator. And now, if you observe this expression carefully, what do you see? 1 plus 4t square, 1 plus t square. Yes, these can be broken down into partial fractions. Yes, we can use idea of partial fractions over here. Okay, how will we use partial fractions? For using partial fractions, we need to create, let us see, one of the ideas is write it as a upon 1 plus 4 t square b plus b upon 1 plus t square. Or what I observe is why not multiply and divide with certain things. So this 4 t square, this t square, there should not be any t square at the top. And multiplying this with 4, this will give me a 4 t square plus 4. And you have to subtract that one. So why not 4 times 1 plus t square, this minus of 1 plus 4 t square this tells me okay 4 t square minus 4 t square goes away 4 minus 1 is 3 but you have only have a 1 over there so in the numerator once you have 3 why not divide by 3 so I am multiplying with this and dividing with this these are exactly same by the way yes what is the benefit of this therefore i will be equal to this 3 goes outside 1 by 3 integral from 0 to infinity what do I get what do I get 4 times 1 plus t square divided by this whole expression. 1 plus t square goes 4 upon 1 plus 4 t square. Minus this divided by this whole 1 plus 4 t square gets cancelled. You will get 1 upon 1 plus t square. Observe this carefully. Yes. So this is another shortcut of partial fractions. Kind of, yes. Without actually finding the partial fractions, we have found them. We have found partial fractions, yes. 4 by 3 is the coefficient of this, 1 by 3 with the minus is the coefficient of this 1, 1 upon 1 plus t square over here. Yes. And now once you have done this much, then it is time to integrate. Yes. So this 1 by 3 is okay. Okay. And 4 is also okay. That's not an issue. This is 1 plus 2t whole square. Okay. This is a square plus x square form or 1 plus x square form. This will go to tan inverse x, right? Just that instead of x you have 2x type of a thing so linear polynomial of x therefore you will divide by 2 so this 4 remains as it is what do you get tan inverse 2t divide by this 2 okay in the bracket minus this is nothing but tan inverse t which is pretty simple yes and now the limits from 0 to infinity okay is that simple yes that looks pretty simple 
what does this convert to? 1 by 3 is okay. This here is 2. In the bracket, you'll have first substitute the limits. 2 times tan inverse infinity is what I'll be getting. Okay. Tan inverse infinity. Do you recall the graph of tan inverse x? You should remember that. Let me draw the graph over here. This graph will be required. Graph of tan inverse x. And from that, you can note the value of tan inverse infinity. This is a graph. This is a graph of tan inverse x. This is 0. This here is pi by 2. This here is minus pi by 2. This is x axis. This is y equals tan inverse x. So as you x becomes very, very large, as x tends to infinity, y will be approaching this line. This is pi by 2. So as x tends to infinity, y will be tending to pi by 2. So limiting value will be pi by 2 over here. So this is tan inverse infinity, which is pi by 2. Okay, minus, oh, there's another tan inverse infinity. That's again pi by 2. This is the first bracket. Minus tan inverse 0, tan inverse 0 will be simply 0. That's the other bracket. Yes or no? Yes. So 2 pi by 2 minus pi by 2 is simple pi by 2. And into 1 by 3 will be pi by 6. That is my required answer for this 27th question as you can see over here.